Well, hello, Knox College. My name is Tim Kennedy, and I'm one of two ecumenical chaplains here at the University of Toronto, and I'd like to welcome you to Community Worship this afternoon. Along with Jeanette Unger, our other ecumenical chaplain, our ministry exists to provide support and pastoral care to students during their educational journeys. Through programs such as QR, grief sharing circles, and in one-on-one -on -one counseling with students, faculty, staff, and administrators, we seek to nurture Christian community and to offer friendship in the name of Jesus Christ. If you're looking for a place to connect, or maybe you just need a listening ear or an empathetic presence, know that we are here for you. Well, these are challenging times for all of us, that's for sure, but we are convinced that we will get through this together. In the words of the Apostle Paul, we are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, terrorized, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. We will get through this together with God's help, for we have not been given a spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of a sound mind. Well, grace and peace to you, Knox College. And now I invite you to prepare your hearts and minds for worship. Good afternoon. I've had the opportunity to go hiking in a forest, and it's been beautiful. And as I've been hiking, I have been aware of the first peoples who walked in these forests and on this land long before you and I ever existed. I'm grateful to the First Nations around the Great Lakes who made a wampum belt covenant to care for and to share the resources around the Great Lakes. And so I'm grateful to the First Nations for the safekeeping and care of this land. And as a settler, I am aware of broken treaties, broken promises, and the need to strive to make right with all our relations. And as I've been walking, I've also been aware of beauty and of God's beauty in this world. As we worship this afternoon, we bring our hopes and our fears. As we worship, we bring our dreams and our visions, and we also bring our stress and our anxieties. We bring our strengths, and we bring our weaknesses. We bring our commitments, and we bring our doubts. And we bring all of this into worship, into this place and this world that God loves a place where God's love abides and remains. Like a rock, God is under our feet. Like a starry night sky, God is over our heads. Like the sun on the horizon, God is ever before. And like a river runs to an ocean, our home is in God evermore. Let us worship.
Our scripture reading this afternoon comes from Paul's letter to the Romans, the 12th chapter, verses 9 through 21. Listen for the word of God. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The Parable of the Talents, Matthew chapter 25, verses 14 to 30. For it is as if a man, going on a journey, summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you have handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter, so I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave! You knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him, and give it to the one with ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Let us pray and ask God's blessing on the sharing of God's word. O God of life, O God of all gifts, O God of abundance, let the words of my mouth 
and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight today. Amen. What is your secret power? Your secret superpower? Oh, uh, you don't think you have one? Well, I have good news for you. According to Jesus, you have been given a very special gift and the power to use that gift. You can take that as the biblical version of a superpower. We find this promise in one of our kingdom parables in the Gospel of Matthew. Um, that is also our Gospel reading for today. The story has uh, similarities with the story that's told in Luke, but it's quite different. And also with one verse in Mark that emphasizes vigilance. But the Matthew story is quite unique. And it's part of a whole series of parables and stories that Jesus brings to explain the nature of the kingdom of God and how that differs from the world that is. Some of the themes that come up before this parable is when Jesus goes up to a fig tree and the fig tree is not bearing fruit and he condemns it for not being fruitful, for not bringing forth what it is meant to bring forth. Another story that we find is the story of vigilance because we do not know the day and the hour that our Lord will come. And directly before the story in Matthew 25 is the story of the wise and foolish maidens and their lamps. Again, it's a story about the kingdom and vigilance. And then we get the parable of the talents beginning at Matthew 25, verse 14. And in this story, we, we seem to have a metaphor for giftedness in the kingdom of God. Now, it's important to think of this parable in the context of the whole Gospel of Matthew, and particularly in the context of the announcement at the beginning of the Gospel of what Jesus' preaching is all about. It starts off in Matthew 4.17 with Jesus announcing and inviting people to turn, to repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. And then he goes on to call his disciples and they leave their nets to follow him. He invites them, he calls them to follow him. In fact, um, these texts at the beginning of the Gospel of Matthew of calling and following are, have, have a similarity with the story in that in this story we also find the word call. The kingdom, it seems, enters our lives by God calling us to it. And here in the parable of the talents, the master calls his servants and then gives them their talents. It begins with the gift of a call or to use Christian language, traditional Christian language, that begins with vocation. What follows the announcement of the kingdom that is near is an unpacking throughout the whole gospel of what this kingdom is, which has come near in Jesus Christ. It explains the content and the meaning of what it means to have faith and what it means to join the kingdom of God. Among the promises are the Sermon on the Mount, the actions of healing of Jesus, his insistence on caring for those who are most in need among us, like the poor, the hungry, the destitute, the naked, those in prison. And he promises superpowers, but he also leaves us with a warning. So what is your superpower? What is your gift or your talent? What are you given and called to by the Master? The first time I had a sense of call, it came unexpectedly. After my second year of architectural studies, I had, uh, that I just successfully completed, my, um, I volunteered to go and work at a Christian summer camp. And it was a wonderful summer experience. A few days after returning home to get ready to go back to school for the next year, I was doing my daily devotions, and I read the text from Hebrews 3.15. Today, 
if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. And somehow this verse just stuck in my mind. It became like an earworm. It haunted me. It haunted me to such a point that I started walking around the house, around and around, until my dad called me into his office and we talked about God and call. Calls come in different ways. It could come through this meditation that I'm offering to you today, or it can come dramatically through life-changing or even sometimes very upsetting events in our life. However, God's call is always a gift. But the gift requires work. In our text, in verse 16, it explains that one of the good servants did something with her gift. The various English translations use different words to translate the Greek term. In the International Standard Version, it says the servant invested the talents. According to the King James Version, the servant traded with the talents. In the Old 1576 Geneva Bible, it says the servant occupied with the talents. And in the Contemporary Good News Bible, it says the servant invested his money. At the root of the Greek concept used is in the sentence is hard work and toil, toiling hard at doing something with the talent. The economic metaphors used in the various English translations, particularly the ones from the 20th century, is perhaps reflective of our capitalist uh, preoccupation today, but it's not completely uncalled for because the word talent almost certainly refers to a kind of currency in the parable. I'm sure you would agree with me that parables are metaphorical. And so Jesus isn't actually saying that he's giving you a $100 little bill and then you should go and find the best stock to invest it in. Jesus is telling us that each is given a gift of God. And the kingdom call is to toil, to work hard with that gift, to use that gift, to make it available for the sake of the kingdom of God. So what is your gift? What is your superpower? What is your call? Maybe you say, well, uh, look at my friend X. She is brilliant. She hardly has to study and she gets straight A's for all her papers. Me? I don't seem to have gotten that gift. I have to work so hard. Well, Jesus was well aware of the experience of the discrepancy of gifts that we all have in our lives. And in this text, he addresses that by using the Greek word for superpower. The Greek word is dynamis, from which we get our word dynamite. We find that word translated in the English in a very good way in this text with the word ability, as for example in verse 15. Each is given and ability. We find that that word translated in English is a very apt way of talking about how to engage our gifts, how to unpack the power, the gift that God is giving us. A special ability to use our gift, no matter how big it is or how small it is. But each one of us have that gift and we are called to use it for the kingdom of God. So how are you toiling with your superpower? Years after that first call that set me on the path to intercultural mission work in the South Pacific among the Maori people of French Polynesia, and then after that ministry in South Africa, where I had to confront the apartheid government, and which later brought me to Canada, where I served in churches in Kirkwall and on the Hamilton Mountain, a new call came my way. It was a long time in coming. It took many, many years for that second call to become clear, and to become real in my life. 
You see, when we are given a call and a talent, we must exercise it for the kingdom. And it often doesn't come to us as a liver-shivering experience of ecstasy, but it works rather through hard toil in our lives. Much blood, sweat, and tears, many ups and downs, makes a call real in our lives. Those servants who had their talents waited a long time and worked very hard over that time until the master returned. God's focus is not on the size of your profits in toiling with your call and gift. God's assessment is focused on your faithfulness. This is literally the phrase used by the master in the parable when he returns and he says to the good servants, good and faithful servant. The master declares that faithfulness is good and the servant who stays faithful is given more gifts, is blessed. Are you working with your gift? So what was that second call, that impossible one that I referred to? What was it? Well, it was simply, simply so preposterous that I did not actually believe it could be a call from God. I sincerely doubted it. It happened during a meeting of a committee of the General Assembly of all things. That meeting took place in room three at Knox College. And during that meeting, while someone was droning on and on with a boring story, it was as if the room lit up around me. And I heard a voice in my mind that said, One day, you will teach in this room. I remember literally shaking my head and saying to myself, What was that? I did not tell a soul about that experience. In fact, I thought it was a function of my human arrogance. I was embarrassed. I thought to myself that perhaps I'm imagining I'm more, uh, that I'm more important than I am. So I simply stowed the memory in my heart. Yet it stayed with me and I never forgot. At that time, it seemed impossible. Yes, I had just submitted my doctoral thesis at the University of South Africa. But it was a missiology, not something that Knox College ever taught. Moreover, I felt like an imposter in academia. What did I know? The theological world is so vast, and I know so little. I've met many others much wiser and better qualified than I am. And also, I loved my pastoral work, and I had no desire to leave it. One thing I learned from that experience is that when we are given a gift, it's also a promise. When God calls and gifts us, God also grants the dynamis, the ability to fulfill the coil and to toil and work with that gift. Sometimes the call seems ludicrous, impossible, and perhaps even boastful. But most of the time, the call also seems beyond our ability. Yet God, God's call and commission will grant us the ability to fulfill it adequately. Perhaps my gift is not as brilliant as that of my colleagues, but be assured that is not the point. The point is, God has called and gifted me. God has given me a task, and that task is the one I should work at the best I can, whether it is with one talent or a thousand. I hope that you are now at the point that you can hug to yourself your own superpower that God gave you. I hope that now you can cherish it, that now you can accept it as a gift without having to think about others who may have more or better gifts. I hope that you are ready to toil with your gift and your call. Which brings me to my third story of call. Yep, there's another one. Well, you have to understand that when you reach the age of 64, there's lots of time for things to happen in your life. My most recent call happened several years before my sabbatical, before the last 
sabbatical, so two sabbaticals back. Through some excruciatingly painful life events, I became aware of the profound harm that LGBTQI people experience in many Christian communities. In my ministry, I had witnessed two beautiful human beings, creatures of God and friends, take their own lives in a deep spiritual struggle. One day I found myself at the brink of a similar despair. And through that dark journey, I learned that that despair, in my experience, was a gift that allowed me to feel compassion for people with similar struggles. What I did not know was that that gift was also a call. One morning I sat in my home congregation at Rosedale Presbyterian Church, waiting for the service to begin. I tucked myself in the corner against the wall as the prelude played on the organ. Suddenly, I was surrounded not by light, but by darkness. I experienced a profound sense of despair, shame, and desperation. I felt alienated to the point that I felt I did not belong in worship or the presence of God. I hasten to say that that feeling had nothing to do with the good people of Rosedale, who are the most wonderful, welcoming congregation. But nevertheless, there I sat, ready to get up and run out of church. But then, through that haze of darkness, I heard that voice in my mind again, that rare but familiar voice that echoed back to the day it said, today if you hear his voice, or the day one day you will. This time that voice simply said, this is why you are here. Be my witness. The journey that followed that call was long and arduous. It involved a lot of toil, writer's block, publishers turning down my manuscript or not even bothering to respond to it. At one point in my research, when I read the history about child abuse, extreme torture, hateful behavior and murder the Christian church engaged in, I became so discouraged and depressed that I wanted to give up. But toil really describes well what it was like to respond to the call with my own limited talent. Of course, the parable of the talents includes a stern kingdom warning. It's not all grace and mercy. There's also judgment. The judgment is not on who you are, but on what you do with God's call and gift. The servant who buried his talent is sternly rebuked. That servant is judged to be wicked and slothful. So I ask again, what is your superpower? What is your call? What is your gift? And are you working with it? Please understand that rebuke is not the most important final word of this parable. The most important final word is to be found repeated in each verse where the good and faithful servant toiled hard with their talents, regardless of how many talents they received. The final word of the master is a call to joy. Literally, the master says, Come in and share my joy. The life of the kingdom, for those who receive their call and work with their talents, is joy together with the Lord. Joy abounds. Our gifts, no matter how few or how feeble they may seem, will multiply. It is joy, O oh joy. The joy of the Lord is our strength, our dynamis, our ability, our superpower. A few weeks ago, I received a letter from a professor who teaches at a Baptist seminary in Alberta. 
He wrote to me after reading my book, Misguided Love, the book that was the fruit of that toil. In his letter, he writes appreciatively of the book and the way it makes its case, and shared in his letter that his local Baptist church had just decided to declare itself the first affirming Baptist congregation in Alberta. You have no idea how much joy that letter brought me. Amen. I'm gonna live so God can use me anywhere, Lord, anytime. I'm gonna live so God can use me anywhere, Lord, anytime. I'm going to work so God can use me anywhere, Lord, anytime. I'm going to work so God can use me anywhere, Lord, anytime. Pray so God can use me anywhere, Lord, anytime. I'm going to pray so God can use me anywhere, Lord, anytime. I'm going to sing so God can use me anywhere, Lord, anytime. I'm going to sing so God can use me anywhere, Lord, anytime. I'm going to live so God can use me anywhere, Lord, anytime. I'm going to live so God can use me anywhere, Lord, anytime. And now, let us join in our prayers of intercession, the prayers of the people. Let us pray. O God, who is our Creator, Christ, who is our Healer, and Spirit, who is our Comforter, all praise belongs to you. Thank you for the gift of the sacred time of prayer and reflection this afternoon. Thank you for each talent we have received in this community. Thank you for the gift of prayer. We come as you instructed us to pray. Let your kingdom come and let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We pray for one another, for each of us struggling to live in the midst of this pandemic. Give us strength and hope. Sustain us when we are sick and comfort us when we mourn. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. We pray for the Christian church. We pray for all the different sisters and brothers in so many different forms of Christian faith. Help us to work together in unity for your kingdom. We pray for the Presbyterian Church in Canada. Inspire and lead us to be a people of compassion and care who are witnesses to your message. We pray for Knox College and all who work here and study here. Guide us as your people to work with and exercise our talents in ways that will glorify your name. Let your kingdom come and let your will be done. We pray for our city and our country. We pray for those who are given wisdom and power and authority. Guide them to make good decisions that will help us all to flourish together. Inspire them with wisdom and curb self-centered interest. Let your kingdom come and let your will be done. 
We pray for those who suffer most in our society. We pray for those isolated in nursing care, for those who are struggling to survive, for those working in the front lines of hospitals, nursing homes, and businesses. Strengthen and protect them, O Lord. Let your kingdom come, and let your will be done. We pray for our world. There is so much suffering and inequity in this world, O God. Help us to be part of the solution. Guide us to live wisely and with care for all who share your planet. Grant us wisdom to protect and care for your creation. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. As we pray, we give you praise for your presence and comfort. All glory and praise belong to you. Amen. And now go in peace. Go and hear God's call to you. Know the gifts that you are given and work with them. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen.